All right, so let's talk about it. And we've been, we've been dancing around this anti-VEGF therapy. And why don't we start out with the obvious one. What is VEGF? Yeah, absolutely. And what is anti-VEGF therapy? Get some definitions on this. Yeah, absolutely. Table. So VEGF stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. It's a cytokine that's released by damaged retina in the back of the eye, which is sort of the, the, the um, oil on the fire, if you will, to grow these abnormal blood vessels. So we have really good data dating back now, 10, 15 years, that if you block VEGF, if you put in these drugs that specifically block this growth factor, that you can limit the expansion of these blood vessels and you can stop them from actively bleeding, which leads to visual benefit. Okay, so that's VEGF. And what are the approved options now yep. on the market uh, for anti-VEGF yep. therapy? So from an ocular perspective, we have two FDA-approved agents. From a medical perspective in general, there's three agents that block VEGF. There's a flibercept and ranibizumab that are both on-label, delivered directly inside of the eye, FDA-approved for the treatment of wet AMD. And then there's bevacizumab, which is used off-label for the treatment of wet AMD. Okay, we'll come back to bevacizumab in a minute. But uh, for the two that are on-label now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, but there are no guarantees. A flibercept and ranibizumab, how Good. do you do? Excellent. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I like awesome better. So we'll go this way. <laughs> what are the dosing and administration uh, uh, guidelines? Well, we've, a, we've alluded to that a little bit uh, already in that most treatments start out monthly. Okay. And then we employ this inject and extend treatment algorithm where when the disease activity is uh, rendered inactive or stable, then we try and spread the treatments out. By the way, many patients re continue to require monthly treatment. And in order to maintain those uh, individuals' vision, we have to treat them monthly on a chronic basis in order to keep them seen. Okay, and when we talk about treatment, we're talking about injecting this stuff into the globe, right? Yeah. I mean, you tell a patient that for the first time, they've never heard of it, they look at you cross-eyed. <laughs> and they say, you're gonna, you're gonna put a well, what in my Well, then they need strabismus wearing? surgery too. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it is, it's a teeny needle. I tell patients, look, the needle's really small, it's hard to see it without a microscope. It goes into the white part of the eye and it really doesn't hurt. And, and that's true for the vast majority of patients. Do you look, use local anesthesia then on the globe? We do, yeah. And there's many different ways to do that, but essentially it should not hurt. There's often a little irritation because of the, the sterilization step that's required to right. minimize risk of infection, but it doesn't hurt. Patients tolerate it really well. You know, when I hear, oh, there's a little irritation, it reminds me of putting in an IV. Just a little pinch. Prick. You know? <laughs> my not favorite, necessarily. My favorite part of every day is when I'm able to treat a new patient who's just frightened to death and as I walk out the door, he says, did they do it already? <laughs> and I love that. Yep. And the potential toxicities of these drugs now? The toxicities from the drugs themselves are exceptionally <laughs> It's unclear if there's even a signal there at all. Really? Really. Nothing. You know, if you look at the large trials, they're not powered to see systemic safety in the way that we would like. There may be a signal from systemic VEGF blockade, but it's really unclear. And I tell patients we have no strong evidence that I am changing your risk profile systemically at the time. Okay. We're really fortunate in that fact to have a medicine that has so few side effects. And really the thing that I worry about as a clinician is having an injection that's associated, or an infection associated with an injection, which yeah, is extremely rare, very rare event. But if you have an infection, it can be a devastating yeah, complication. I was going to say, if you, yeah. if you somehow or other get an intraocular infection, that can be Correct. catastrophic, right? Yeah, and again, very rare event. Uh, but if it happens, you want somebody that's has great expertise in being able to manage that. And that's another reason to be having this treatment done by retina specialists. Okay, so we're gonna do this once a month, at least at first. Yeah. We're gonna choose among a variety of drugs. So how do you decide which drug to start with, which drug to use? And then we're gonna get to money because some of them cost more than others. Well, I think, uh, you know, we certainly, when we're looking at how to treat a patient and we have these options before us, you have to kind of decide what your goals of treatment are. And for me, my, my goal of treatment is to try and get that lesion to dry out as fast as I can to become as inactive as possible, and also to try and administer the least number of treatments over the course of their, their need for treatment. But I mean, isn't that the goal for everybody every time? Well, you know, it would be nice to be in a world where our only consideration is efficacy. Uh, in that world, this decision becomes very easy, I think, and, and you use the on-label medication. But the world that we live in is such that there is a very uh, disparate uh, cost for these medications, and so that plays a huge role. I think no one would use Avastin uh, to treat patients uh, if it weren't cheap. Uh, if, if, the, the, uh, if the agents were all the same price, 
there would no one that would use bevacizumab to treat their patients. And bevacizumab is off-label. Correct. Right? So again, how, how does your decision tree differ from his, if at all? I agree 100%. I, the goal is to dry these eyes out as quickly as possible and maintain them as dry as possible with as few injections as possible. You minimize side effects and you optimize their outcome. The other thing I will add is that we always have to consider safety. And so the nice, and, uh, the nice advantage to using the on-label medications, they are manufactured and developed specifically for use in the eye. Um, for the bevacizumab, it has to be repackaged by a compounding pharmacy uh, and then there are issues associated with the repackaging. And uh, you know, prior to recent endeavors, uh, compounding uh, in the ocular world was sort of a Wild West endeavor. And unfortunately, there's sentinel mm -hmm. events that have happened that have brought in additional regulations, which have helped. But even after these regulations have been in place and oversight over these compounding pharmacies, uh, we've had issues with the repackaging of this medicine, which, has, which makes it more uh, I, I have a hard time con using this medication mm -hmm. when I have to worry about some of the risks associated with the repackaging.